Hey everybody, it's Fernando from the Rollback Podcast, and I am reviewing a somewhat new movie. It just came out this weekend, Candyman. So, going into the movie, I wasn't entirely sure how I felt about the movie. I remember seeing the trailers for it, and I'm not, to be honest, I'm not really familiar about Candyman in general, the original movies. I had seen bits and pieces growing up. But other than that, never really, never really delved into them. Never really saw them, to be honest. Um, the only one that I had ever that ever really comes to mind is the third one, and uh, in particular the last scene <clears throat> where there is a giant fire, this giant uh, bonfire going on, and um, you just hear crackle, crackle, and. Um, there's a baby stuck in the bonfire, and uh, the the main actress goes to save the baby, and that's pretty much it. That's all I remember uh, from the movie. Uh, so going into this movie, I wasn't sure if this movie was gonna be a continuation or if it was gonna be a reboot, because they never really said um, if I'm if I'm correct. Um, I don't ever remember them saying if it's a reboot or if it's a continuation. Uh, But yeah, uh, let's get on with the review. Uh, So this movie, um, I I liked it. I actually liked it. I thought it was actually really good. Um, I thought it was pleasantly enjoyable. Uh, It's not some horror uh, jump scare movie, to be honest. Um, I would put it more in the category of, uh, an eerie type horror, not so much a outright scary type horror, but I mean, overall, I thought this movie was, uh, really well done. I thought it was really well made. Um, Jordan Peele doing the screenplay and, uh, Nia DaCosta as well, uh, who ultimately, uh, directed the movie, I thought she did great in this movie. I thought she did a fantastic do- ah, fantastic job uh, directing this movie. Uh, come to find out, she's actually going to be going on to direct the Captain Marvel sequel, uh, The Marvels, which hopefully, uh, hopefully she saves that one because... Yeah, that first Captain Marvel movie just it was not great. It was such a it was such a in between movie, uh, because it was made between Endgame and Infinity War. So it just it didn't have a good place. And that's cause Ant Man and the Wasp I thought was way better than Captain Marvel. Just starting out there. Um but yeah, I mean, so far I like this movie. I thought it was really well done. I saw it with my girlfriend, and we both thought this movie was actually really good. Um, but I mean, for the most part, I wasn't really ex- I wasn't really sure what to expect because I hadn't really seen the original, so I wasn't sure if I had to expect jump scares or if I had to expect um, anything particular. Uh, but for the most part, yeah, I very much enjoyed this one. I can't wait, uh, to see it again. Um, maybe I'll be able to appreciate it a little bit more. Uh, but for the most part, yeah, I would say definitely go see it. Uh, it's not your typical horror movie, but it's a really great horror movie. Uh, the synopsis for the movie is, In present day, a decade after the last of the Cabrini Towers were torn down, Anthony and his partner move into a loft in the now gentrified Cabrini. A chance encounter with an old timer exposes Anthony to the true story behind Candyman. Anxious to use these macabre details in his studio as fresh grist for paintings, he unknowingly opens a door to the complex past that unravels his own sanity and unleashes a terrifying wave of violence. Now, as far as the cast goes, I thought the cast was really well casted in this movie. I didn't think anyone was bad. 
Um, I know everyone was expecting to see Tony Todd reprise his uh, role as Candyman because he played Candyman in the original uh, three movies. And I believe he does make somewhat of an appearance. Um, I, to be honest, watching it, I wasn't too sure if I saw him in the movie. Uh, looking online, it does say that he does make an appearance. Uh, but in the movie, you follow, uh, yeah, ye- all right, I'm going to try my best to pronounce this. Uh, yeah, yeah, Abdul Mateen the second. Uh, he plays the main character. Um. Oh, it's the dude from Aquaman. So he comes out in Aquaman. And he plays uh, Mantis, Black Mantis. Um, I I liked him in this movie. I thought he did a really good job at playing someone that goes fucking crazy. Because in the movie, he really does go crazy. Um, you're following this guy who is trying to find influence for his paintings, and he stumbles across the Candyman legend. Only to find out that um, he's now being put into this test of wits. Um, He does go and talk to this uh, local, uh, William Burke, who tells him about the Candyman story. Um, We do get to see a little uh, rewind in the very beginning uh, where William Burke is uh being uh he's a kid at the time he's going to do laundry in this uh laundromat under this apartment building and when he comes out he sees this hole in a wall and out comes this fucking creepy dude with candy you know normal um and he he screams uh which leads to uh the police killing this man who Ultimately plays Candyman throughout the movie. Um, So, again, I can't really compare anything to the old Candyman movies. Because I've never really seen them. So, uh, I'm going to try my best just to keep it to this movie. Um, But, yes, I did find out pretty much early on into the movie. That this was more of a continuation opposed to a reboot. Because... in in the beginning, of the, not the beginning, but I'd say probably a third in, we find out um, that this is a continuation when he goes to talk to one of the locals about the Candyman, and um, they talk about the last scene in the third movie, the one that I had seen when I was a kid. So when that happened, I was just like, oh, it's a continuation, it's not a reboot. So I was just like, oh, okay, cool. Um... But yeah, so we are looking at Gentrified Chicago at this point. And it seems as though Candyman has always been a person that was wrongfully accused. Um, uh, In the original, uh, he was played by Tony Todd, who is a black man. Uh, So it's usually a person of color that is uh, a Candyman. And... It's not necessarily a a profession. Uh, ironically enough, the person that we see in the beginning uh, was giving candy out to people. But the person that Tony Todd played in the original wasn't giving candy out to people. He was actually a portrait, uh, a portrait sketcher. And he fell in love with a, uh, I believe, a tycoon of some sort's daughter, uh, white, you know. And he gets her pregnant. And the father has him killed uh, by having bees uh, sting him to death. And then he stabs a meat hook into his hand. And that's how they created that Candyman. But Candyman necessarily isn't uh, a profession. It's more of a title given to a person that is uh, that has gone through some sort of tribulation where he was wrongfully accused or... He, wrongfully uh a hurt for no reason whatsoever um and yes so we see the main character uh figure this out but at the time he starts to lose his mind 
um, people start dying. Uh, he uses the Candyman uh, for his art exhibit, and people start saying the the phrase Candyman uh, five times in the mirror, and if you do, he pops up and kills you. Uh, some people take it lightly, and some people start saying it, and then you see people starting to get murdered. And what I liked about the murders in the movie, uh, they were actually pretty enjoyable. Like, they didn't cut away. Um, they weren't, like, super jump scare. It was just really well done. Uh, you see that happen to some of his colleagues who are artists. Uh, in turn, it happens to this critic uh, when he leaves the, the apartment. Um the the one that you see in the trailer is the one that happens to the kids in school uh she was at the art opening and then she just kind of took the idea from the exhibit and next thing you know like she does the thing with her friends and while they're in the bathroom they start doing the candy man thing and they all just start getting murdered um and there's a girl who's in the stall they're starting to pick on her and next thing you know, like, you just see a reflection of the girls just getting mangled. Um, come to find out, you see, you find out that, um, the main character was the baby at the end of the third movie. So that's interesting to find out. And it looks like he was chosen, uh, by Tony Todd and the originals to, I guess, carry on his legacy. And, uh, cause you could see in the movie, the main character starts to kind of deteriorate and you see like his arms start to rot and shit. And you just see him like, just get worse and worse and worse. Um, and, oh, the makeup department in this movie, oh, man, they did a good job. Cause he looked, Ooh, like, Ugh, near the end when you see what happens uh to his body he just looks oh if you have one of those uh phobias where you can't look at um you can't look at people like that have holes uh on their skin who you're gonna have a bad time but oh they did a really good job at just at just doing this one but yeah, I would highly recommend this one for sure. Um, but yeah, so it goes on to find out that it seems as though he was chosen to to continue this legacy. Uh and one of the locals uh kidnaps him, uh his girlfriend at the time, and he's basically gonna use him to continue on the Candyman name. Um and by framing him for murder and having the police kill him to basically uh, serve up an unjust killing so that he can become Candyman. Because at this point, we end up finding out that Candyman was not just Tony Todd's character. He was the first Candyman, but there was multiple Candy Men. So Candyman wasn't just a singular character. It was a whole variety of characters so very interesting um but yeah at the end of the movie you see you see anthony take his place as one of the new candy men um so i mean overall i i really like this movie i thought it was really well done i think jordan peele makes quality work uh, granted, he didn't direct it, but he did uh, back it. He produced it. So I think he has a good nag for horror, which is crazy because, I mean, he's clearly uh, very good at doing comedic writing, comedic sketches, things of that sort. So, like, to see him jump into the horror genre with um, Get Out and... I'm sorry, I can't remember his other movie, but, uh, um, I both, I enjoyed both of those, I thought they were both very enjoyable movies, I thought Get Out was really well done, I thought he really should have been nodded for best director in that one, but that's just me, 
Um, but overall, man, you know what? I really do think that you should see this movie. It's way better than Don't Breathe 2, so please watch this movie opposed to that one. That one is a gigantic dumpster fire, and ugh, it's annoying. Um, but yes, check them out. Uh, and yeah, that is it for uh, today's review, everybody. Um, I'm going to be trying to put up some more reviews. Um, but yeah, that is it for today. This is Fernando from the Rollback Podcast, and this was your new movie review. Let's cut it.